harder to be closer to the pulse, to the street. Um, but I think you've done a really nice job watching you from afar. And so answer this question directly. Like, what do you think on this brand performance? Like, how do people balance brand building and performance from your perspective? Yeah, I think, you know, not to be contrarian, I just have a different viewpoint out of it. And I actually don't think these things are two separate things. I don't either. I, I, how I approach. I, when I heard you at the CMO summit and like no, notice balancing, like I believe balancing is, could be looked at two different ways to your point, opposites or actually the purple, the yeah. exit, huh? So they complement each other. And if you really think about it and what we try to do with the brands that I work on, the team that I have at Colgate Pomelo, like I have the privilege of leading what we call the consumer experience and growth team, which means nothing to anyone. But really what we've done is rethought about what marketing for the future for now in this complex consumer driven environment really means. And so we put the consumer at the center of everything. So what does that mean? So my team has revenue growth management, insights, data and advanced analytics, but also some of those traditional um, CMO elements that you would think of when it comes to digital commerce or brand building or creative or social or um, just traditional media. And the reason why we did that is, is a consumer experience is just not about brand love. It's not about you know actually experiencing the product. Uh, it's not just about seeing an ad that you fall in love with. It really is the entire touch point. So from when I get the product to the zero moment of truth and I'm in the consideration all the way to the second moment of truth where I actually experience the product, which is really where you drive and build brands, um, all of those touch points matter. And how we make that experience more exceptional and what are the jobs to be done so that we really build the brand? You know, at Colgate, we have brands that are 217 year old, like Colgate toothbrush, which you all know and love and are having your shells. But we also have newer brands like Hello, which is yeah. a very design forward brand, countertop friendly, but really thinks about the consumer experience at every single touch point. So a long way of saying, every, every touch point in marketing is performance driving. Every touch point in marketing should be brand building. And if you don't think about it that way, then you're not thinking from a human or a consumer lens. Why, explain to all the people that are watching, because what normally happens is like, I'm looking at the chat right now, we're doing this on LinkedIn exclusively today. This is obviously gonna be on my podcast. We're gonna cut this up and chop this up and put it everywhere. Explain, you know, obviously the corporate people are gonna understand this, but go down into the trenches of the audience I'm seeing here. Explain to people why corporations, because your statement makes so much sense. I came from small business and startup land. Why have big market organizations, the Fortune 500s, why, why are they not consumer centric? Why are they academia centric or corporate centric? I, I, I don't think the large, so my sweet spot is a 100, 200 year old company. That's my, that's where I come into play. And I don't think that they're not consumer centric. I think it's an end. They're consumer centric, but when you're a big ship and you've been around that long to be able to be around for another 200 years, you have to make sure that you're, you know, from a finance standpoint, that you have smart accounting principles, that legal is your best friend. When you're a larger brand, you become a legal target. So all of those things create another lever. I think it's how you think and approach them. So my best friends at work, my head of legal, my CFO, HR as well too, because you can't get the right talent for your roles without that. And I think right now, a lot of folks approach them, especially in marketing teams as, oh, we gotta get around legal, or oh, you know, we gotta try to convince the CFO that this is a good idea, rather than bringing them along for the journey. So at the end of the day, what does the CFO want? What do even I want? I wanna get my bonus. Um, we wanna deliver um, a profit back to, um, you know, our investor yeah. community. So how do we do that? Well, we create these brand experiences. So really being able to link and connect the two uh, is important and understanding the flexibility that we need in a P&L to, to be able to move at the speed of culture. You, you just have to bring your CFO folks along. And then legal plays such a critical role, especially in a social environment and wanting to be in the moment of culture, uh, working with your legal partner so you can do it in a, in a way that actually protects your brands and allows you to do things that are appropriate and don't open you up uh, for litigation. So it's not that they're not brand obsessed. It's that the bigger you get, you know, they say more money, more problems. The bigger you get, the more that you have to be thoughtful about maintaining a position. And I would say the last thing that is really critical for larger companies that they have to work on, when you have a large company, it's just like being in a big family. You have 
workers in the factory, you have workers across multiple markets, and you want to make sure that you don't make decisions that risk their livelihood as well, too. The stakes are higher. Of course. So that's really what's driving some of the extra layers that you have to maneuver through when you're in a bigger corporation. The thing that I'm curious about from your perspective is the extra layers lead to less speed, right? Water down. Those those were not as big of an issue in a small in a slower world. Yes. When your competitors were also spending six months to put out a commercial, you know, that's one thing. But obviously, no. for example, Colgate, we all know what we all know. No. Like in there's been a lot of innovation yeah. in your space. Cat was on and something. those smaller entrepreneurs with the, you know, the advantages of being able to be in retail or have the money to do media have changed a lot in a world where Shopify can represent, a Shopify store can represent the ability to reach consumers the way being in all the Walmarts used to, or that social can now represent what commercials did. What, what are, you know, knowing that you, in that sweet spot, have been around 200 year old companies, what do you think the best big companies, what's the best behaviors that you've seen from big companies to actually get good at um, the nimbleness needed to be great at building brand and getting performance. I, t- I tell this to my son, and it's the same thing I approach business with. You can't be a me too. You can't go after, hey, the small guys do it this way. No, you've got to own your own space. So we are typically in most categories, we in the air income, but we do have smaller, um, um, yeah. you know, but, you know, disruptor brands that we're also building, but if you but specifically focus on those incumbent brands, leverage the scale. Those smaller brands, they would love the brand loyalty, the scale, the fact that, you know, Colgate itself is the number one household pin array brand in the planet. Like, that's not a low key brand, that, those are just facts. And that's so perfect. have that brand love to play with. So, yes, can they move with speed in certain areas that I cannot? That is true. But what I have to work with from an already emotional connection with my consumer. Um, advocacy and um, consumer love that, you know, when I have a brand like Fabuloso, before I can even put something on social, we had people dress up like Fabuloso for Halloween this year and send that to us. So there are intangible things 